What's the other thing that Jibreel alayhi salam does? What else does he deal with? Every nation that rejects the revelation is also dealt with with Jibreel alayhi salam. So anytime you read about a nation, and of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ لَمَّا ظَلَمُوا That we destroyed them when they oppressed, when they transgressed. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says, Allah never sent Jibreel to destroy a nation simply because they disbelieved. Allah sends Jibreel to destroy a nation when that nation becomes aggressive with the Prophet that's been sent to them and the believers. That's when Allah sends Jibreel. And Jibreel deals with them in a mighty way. The entire, uh, pe- the people of Lut alayhi salam, that entire city was destroyed by the tip of one of Jibreel's wings. They were lifted up and they were destroyed by the tip of one of his wings. So it shows you the strength of Jibreel alayhi salam. And in that, Asuyuti rahimahullah, he says that in that is a sign that these angels, you know, though if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to bring the revelation, Jibreel doesn't argue or debate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah says, okay, now these people are done. They respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah tells Jibreel, enough, then it's enough. Alright, but through him, Hayatul Qulub, the, the life of the heart, spiritual life. Who's the second angel that you often hear, even uh, mentioned with Jibreel alayhi salam? Mikal or Mikail alayhi salam. And through Mikail alayhi salam, physical life is a portion. That's how the scholars describe him. Hayatul Nas in that sense. Uh, provision, al-risq, wal-riyah, wal Okay, provision, sustenance, uh, rain, winds. Mikail alayhi salam is the angel that Allah has chosen to move them in certain ways when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands him to do so. So it's a very famous hadith in Sahih Muslim where a man is walking and he hears a voice coming from the clouds and it says, Isqi hadiqa to fulan, go and water the garden of so and so. And the man follows that cloud and water would not come out of it until it reached a particular garden and it fell on this man's particular garden. That's Mikail alayhi salam. Okay? The third, the next two actually have to do with death. So two of them are in relation to life, two of them are in relation to death. The next two, Israfil alayhi salam, who Israfil deals with the taking of people's souls massively or collectively. Okay, qabd al-arwah, taking the souls collectively. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this great angel with one task and one task alone, and that is to blow the horn. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I lost my appetite for this world when I saw Israfil alayhi salam with his lips already puckered to it, his eyes gazing at the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fixated like stars, waiting for the command. Meaning the entire world rests on, and that's it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I lost my appetite, any appetite I had for this world, I lost it when I saw Israfil alayhi salam. The fourth one deals with the taking of the souls individually. What's his name? Actually, that name doesn't exist. Malak al-Maut, the angel of death. He's only called the angel of death. Allah and the Messenger ﷺ referred to him as the angel of death. Malak al-Maut, alladhi wukila bikum, who's been assigned to you to take your souls when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees so. So this group of angels, they are al-muqassimati amra, those that apportion the command of Allah. They're the most elite class of the angels, and the most elite of that class is Jibreel alayhi salam. Now what's Jibreel's name? What are, how can you say the name of Jibreel alayhi salam? What are some of the ways to pronounce his name? Jibreel, Jibra'il, 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 Jibreel. Those are five ways that have been narrated through the various qira'at. Alright, Jibreel, Jibra'il, 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 and Jibreel. Okay? Now, obviously, the name is not from an Arabic origin, right? Or, or it's not something that, that you know, you can, you can dissect uh, simply by using the Arabic language. So you go to the origin of that name. Now, what do you keep on hearing? You tell me what you keep on hearing. Jibreel, Mikail, Israfil, Israel. What do you keep on hearing? Il, right? Il means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no dispute there about the meaning of Il. The first part of the name though, has caused a lot of debate, right? What does Jibra mean? What does Mika mean? The traditional opinion which has been traced to the Sahaba, uh, to Ibn Abbas and to Ali ibn Hussein and many others, is that Jibra means Abd, means servant, the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the one that you'll find in Tafsir al-Tabari and so on and so forth, that Jibra'il is Abdullah, okay? 
And Mikail is Ubaidullah, which would be the smaller Abd. You know, in, in the, amongst the companions you'll see, Abdullah has a younger brother named Ubaidullah. Or Abdullah has a son named Ubaidullah. That's the traditional opinion. However, when you study the root of Jibra, it comes from the root of Jabr, which means strength. Which also ties into another description that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, which is Shadeedul Quwa. The one who Allah gave a massive amount of strength. Okay, Allah, Allah praises his strength two times. Allah calls him Shadeedul Quwa, the Quwa. He possesses a mighty amount of strength. So it could either be that, Abdullah, or the one who's been given an amazing amount of strength from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alright, so that's his name and that's the meaning of his name. Now, what are some ways that the Prophet ﷺ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to him? This is truly interesting. When I started my research, the very first day my eyes got big because I started off with Al-Bukhari. I said, first I'm going to take all the hadith about Jibreel from Al-Bukhari. The very first hadith I pulled from Al-Bukhari that mentioned Jibreel, the Prophet ﷺ said, Jibreel sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was like, what? I studied Kitab al-Wahid, the book of Revelation a million times. And I never paid attention to that. When the Prophet ﷺ referred to Jibreel, he often said, Jibreel ﷺ. Which obviously, we usually refer to Jibreel as, السلام, May peace be on to him. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, invoked salawat on him as well, prayers upon him as well, لِعُلُوِّ شَأْنِ As the scholars say, to show his status amongst those that the Prophet ﷺ was referring to. The only person that you see the Prophet ﷺ do that with other, other than Jibreel, or the only creature that you see the Prophet ﷺ do that with other than Jibreel on a frequent basis is Ibrahim ﷺ. Which was traditionally understood again to show the position of Ibrahim ﷺ or ﷺ in our faith. Right? So Jibreel ﷺ, sometimes the Prophet ﷺ would say that. Alright? Another thing, the Prophet ﷺ often doesn't even say his name. You know how he refers to him? He says, مَنْ عِنْدَ Rabbi, The one who's with my Lord. Right? To show how close he is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَنْ عِنْدَ Rabbi. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to him in multiple ways. And I can't go through each and every single time. Allah refers to Jibreel ﷺ. It's too extensive of a study. Inshallah ta'ala in the future we'll be able to get to it. But just the common themes. The most common theme that you find is the word ruh, spirit or soul. Okay? Allah calls him Ar Ruh al Qudus, the Holy Spirit. Allah calls him Ar Ruh al Amin, the trustworthy spirit, the truthful spirit. Allah calls him Ruhana, our spirit, right? Which is a means of veneration in the Arabic language. When you, attri when you attribute something to yourself, it's a means of venerating it. So when Allah says, Baytullah, the house of Allah, it's a means of venerating the Kaaba. Likewise, Allah says about Jibreel alayhi salam, our spirit, as a means of venerating uh, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. Now, what does that mean? Why is Jibreel constantly being referred to as a ruh, the spirit? And there's so much beauty to the explanations that are given. All right? One of them is that Jibreel brings what gives a person a soul, what settles the heart, right? In essence, you know, Imam Suyuti says, أَوَ مَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ As Allah says, weren't you dead and Allah gave you life? God gives life through what? Revelation. So, in, in, in some of the scholars, they said that he's called that because he brings that which gives you a soul in the first place, which gives you life. Right? And if you dissect where the root letters uh, of ruh, then it's the same root as raha, which is to comfort, which is to settle. Just as the soul settles the body, Jibreel alayhi salam brings that which settles the heart. So he's called a ruh Another one is that ruhuha ay khayruha. That the spirit of something means in the Arabic language the best of something. It's Allah praising the purity of Jibreel alayhi salam. Like he's the cream of the crop. He's khayruha. A third one, which is the most interesting one, and the one that Asuyuti chooses, and the one that has the greatest evidence to it, and it's quite fascinating, is that Jibreel is the first living, breathing creature of Allah. He is the first creature that's ever been given a soul. Without any parents, without anything, without anything to, you know, any prerequisites to it. He was simply brought into existence and he was the first thing brought into existence with a soul. How is he brought into existence? You know, when babies are born, they make all these noises and they figure things out, right? They're, they're cute noises sometimes and they're not so cute noises at other times. They make all these noises and they start getting to Baba and Mama or whatever it is that they get to. 
Right? What about the malaika? What about Jibreel alayhi salam? When he was brought into existence, what did he say? Right? Sa'id ibn Musayyib radiallahu anhu narrates, مَا نَهَضَ مَلَكٌ حَتَّى قَالْ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ as the angels are brought into existence, they say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no power or might except that of God.